Welcome to First Lutheran Church in Clifton, New Jersey. My name is Pastor Jeff and I would like to welcome you to worship today. We're so glad that you've chosen to take this time to be with us. Here at First, we are building first in faith. And as we build our lives first in faith, we know, we know for certain that no matter where we are, that the Holy Spirit unites us. My hope and prayer is that you will be filled with this spirit and filled with God's love and God's peace during our time of worship. Let us begin our worship with our confession and forgiveness. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sins. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in our opening hymn, You Servants of God. who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Romans, the 12th chapter. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. 
Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, as f so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Now, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do we have any children here? Come on up. Hugs. High five. Oh, it is so good to see you today. I'm so glad that you're here. Hey, I was wondering, how many of you are going back to school soon? Yeah, a lot of you I see. That's great. Are you excited? What's that? You're a little nervous. You're a little nervous because of this virus. Oh, I understand that. I'm a little nervous sometimes about this virus too. What's that? You're disappointed. Why are you disappointed? Oh, because you're going to start school on your computer and not get to go to that school building to see all your friends. Oh, I could see how you could be disappointed. You could be nervous, you could be disappointed, but it is an opportunity and you'll have a chance to learn and hopefully we'll be back to school really, really soon. You know, I got to see some teachers that you know. I got to see your Sunday school teachers just last week. We had a meeting outside and we sat kind of spaced out and it was good to see them and to talk because we were talking about Sunday school starting soon. And just like a lot of your schools, we decided that it wasn't safest right now to start Sunday school here in the church building. And we're going to start Sunday school by the computer, just like a lot of your schools. And hopefully soon we'll be back here in person. That's what we can't wait for when it's safe to do so. So here's what we're going to do. Each of your Sunday school teachers are going to make a lesson. Each week there's going to be a different Sunday school teacher that does a video just like this church video and they're going to do the Sunday school lesson and read the Bible story with you on YouTube TV just like our worship is. And I need your parents to let us know if you want to do this. Tell the church, call the church or email the church and say, yes, my son or daughter wants to be part of Sunday school this year and we're going to mail you a little packet and it'll have a different lesson for each week that you can fill out at home after you watch one of our teachers, one of your teachers here at church teach the Sunday school lesson on YouTube. We, we, would, we would much rather have you come to church and do that, but right now it's not safe, but we're so excited about this new opportunity for us to continue to learn about Jesus. You know, we're fortunate to be able to have Sunday school here. But there's many churches that can't afford to have a Sunday school. And so today starts our week of positive change. And we're gonna be collecting the coins and dollars outside. I'll leave this outside of the church. And we're gonna collect the positive change. Any money you might wanna drop by the church and put right inside the bucket and we'll bring it inside at night and then we'll put it back outside in the morning. We'll take that money and we're going to use that for the ELCA Sunday School Startup Ministry. And this money will be used to provide Sunday school for churches that maybe can't afford it right here in the United States and throughout the world. 
Because with our gifts, we can make a positive change in Jesus' name. I'll put this outside and remember to bring your gifts this week so that we can put it all together and help others to have Sunday school. Let's have a prayer. Dear Lord God, sometimes we're nervous. Sometimes we're disappointed. Sometimes we're excited. And we know that you are always with us. Lord Jesus, bless us, keep us safe, bless our schools, and bless our Sunday school. Help us to know that you are always with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, thanks for coming up, and you can go back to your seats. I hope to see you all very soon. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what he has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I love you. Three very simple words that can change your life. For those who have known love, to hear those words can bring a sense of security, a sense of peace, of well-being. To say those words makes a promise to the one that we love. For others who are not as fortunate, I love you can stir up feelings of betrayal or even abuse. And for others, I love you can stir up feelings of sadness when we miss a loved one who has died and gone to be with our Lord Jesus Christ. I love you. Three very simple words, and yet the words, I love you, are powerful and can change our lives. In the Bible, God says in many different ways, I love you. In fact, God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son to die on a cross so that whoever believes in Jesus will not die, but will have eternal life in heaven. God loves us so much that whenever we cry out, God listens. Whenever we fall, God picks us up. 
Whenever we sin, God forgives us. Whenever we experience joy, it is a gift from God, and God celebrates with us. God shows us how to love. God shows us how to love, and all we need to do is to receive the love of Jesus. All we need to do is to reflect the love of Jesus with those around us. All we need to do is to love as we have been loved by God. And when we do this, this world will be a better place our relationships will be stronger. Our lives will be more like the lives that God intends for us in the first place. I love you, God says. And when God says, I love you, God truly means it. God says we should love one another as Jesus loves us. And God means this as well. Our world, our world needs this kind of love right now. In the midst of political division, we need this love. As racial tensions rise around us, we need Christ's love. As anxieties increase, as this virus keeps clinging on and dragging on around us, keeping us from the things we love, separating us from the ones we love, our world needs God's love. Our world needs God's love to unite us in what really matters, our common humanity created in the image of God. In Paul's letter to the Romans, we hear these words. Let love be genuine. Let love be genuine. Love isn't about getting our own way. You can't fake your way through love, pretending that you care when you really don't, because eventually the truth about love will come out. Let love be genuine, the Bible says. Hate what is evil. You know what that is. Selfishness, greed, unfaithfulness. Hate what is evil and hold fast to what is good. Let love be genuine, the Bible says. Love one another with mutual affection. Have you ever seen two people that are really in love with each other? Maybe it's someone who's been married for years and years and years. Each one cares for the other as much, if not more than the other one cares for them. And together they show this love, this love that is tangible, that you can see, that you can feel, that is mutual. Imagine. If we were more attentive to our loved ones than we were to ourselves, and we could have this mutual love, the world would be a better place. Let love be genuine, the Bible says. Outdo one another in showing honor. I personally love a good competition, but the competition I see these days is in who can say the meanest thing about the other person. Who can get the biggest dig in? Often followed by the words, just kidding. Or I didn't really mean that. Or I'm sorry to offend you. This is not what Jesus is talking about when he says, let love be genuine. Outdo one another in showing honor, in showing honor. Because all this does is sow hate and mistrust and division. It's not love. 
God says, let love be genuine, outdo one another in showing honor, treat each other with respect. Honor our veterans, honor pastors and teachers and police officers, honor your elders and your neighbors, whether they are black or brown or white, honor the stranger in the stores and the restaurants, the first responders, the doctors and the nurses, Honor those who disagree with you, because who knows, they might actually be right. And even if they are wrong, we should still honor them, because we are all in this together as God's brothers and sisters, God's holy family. Care for one another in your household and try to outdo one another in love and respect and in honor. Can you imagine what this type of competition would do in your family, in your neighborhood, in our communities, in our country, in our world? Try. But I will warn you, it's not easy because sometimes we are very selfish people. Try it. Let love be genuine. Outdo one another in showing honor. And if you succeed just, just a little bit, your household will be filled with love. And this world will be just a little bit better. Let love be genuine, the Bible says. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in times of suffering, like we're going through right now. Persevere in prayer. Keep praying. Know that God is with us. Don't ever give up. My friends, Jesus shows us how to love by giving his life for you and for me. It's not our job to get even with people, the Bible says. It's not even healthy for us to try. Let God figure all that stuff out. We are called to love, called to serve, called to feed the hungry, called to care for those who are struggling. In short, we are called to love as Jesus loves us. God summarizes this call to love with these words today. Contribute to the needs of the saints and extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not claim to be wiser than you actually are. None of us have all the answers. If it is possible, the Bible says, as long as it depends on you, live peaceably with one another. Lord knows there's a lot of division in this world right now. Lord knows there's a lot of anxiety in this world right now. But as disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, we know that this is not God's way. God loves you. This is true without a doubt. And God loves your neighbor. This is true without a doubt. God forgives you. 
This is true without a doubt. And God forgives your neighbor. Also true without a doubt. God has created all of us in his image. And it is good. We are called to live as one holy family on this earth. How do we do this? It's not always easy, but we know with God all things are possible. Let your love be genuine, and God will work through you to make this world a better place. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in confessing our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for all people, especially those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirit of those who are despairing and heal the sick, especially those we name before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Guide us as we grapple with how and when to return to in-person worship in these confusing times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we pray for our schools, teachers, administrators, support staff, parents, and students as preparations are made for the new school year. Give wisdom to those who plan so that students continue to learn and grow in safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. I invite you to share the peace of the Lord with those who might be in the room with you as you're watching. If you're by yourself, that's fine. I invite you to take out your cell phone and text, peace be with you, to someone that you know. And if you don't have a phone with you right now, that is absolutely fine. After worship, pick up the phone and call someone, send someone an email or a text, and simply share God's peace with someone else. I would like to say a word about your offerings. Your offerings are your faithful response to all that God has given to you. They allow this church and the greater church to continue ministry to God's people in our local and global communities. If you are unable to give as much due to changes in your financial circumstances, that is completely okay. We totally understand this. However, it is vital that those of us who can give continue to do so. Please send your offerings electronically or by mailing a check to 1337 Van Houten Avenue in Clifton, New Jersey. I wanted to let you know that last month's positive change collection for fruit tree ministry of the ELCA received over $80, so thank you for that generosity. And again, any offerings, any change uh, you might bring to the church uh, will go towards Sunday School Startup Ministries through our positive change offering. Thank you in advance for your generosity that has kept our ministry strong, serving Clifton, the surrounding communities, and the world. Let us pray in unison. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, 
signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in our closing hymn, Blessing and Honor. God bless you.